I got a new boss this year, 2023, who is rating my 2022 performance because my previous boss is no longer with the company. How do I make sure I get the rating I deserve when he wasn't around for any of my work last year? Ooh, great question. So first of all, I think the biggest note to self on this is don't wait to don't wait till your review to share and document your performance. So I worked for this woman at Yahoo. She was one of those fabulous, like direct speaking ass kicking women who just like drank too much Chardonnay and then offended every client we had on the face of the earth. But she did give me this great piece of advice, which is that if you are managing your employees feedback only on an annual review, you are a shitty manager because review feedback and feedback in general is something you should give to someone every single day. And I tend to agree with that. But I also think it's true if you're the person being reviewed. Like, why wait for your manager at the end of the year? Why wait for your manager to quit and you get a new boss and then you're like, shit, no one knows how awesome I am. So one thing you could do is every week, that seems a little bit aggressive, or more likely every month, just give a quick like, here's what I accomplished this month. Here's the results that it yielded. This is why it was great. Do you have any feedback? I would imagine that your new boss in this scenario has something to fall back on. So probably notes from your last manager. Maybe you do 360 reviews. Uh, maybe they'll get feedback from you know, your old boss's boss. So good note, another note to self, make sure your boss's boss knows what you do. But the biggest thing I would do to make sure your new boss understands your value is to show your value. Ask for a one-on-one -on -one with your new boss, explain everything you've learned at the company, everything you've achieved at the company, your aspirations, things you're working on. And then before you do all that, listen and ask that person what they care about, what they value, what they're interested in, what their vision is. So then you can put all your stuff and all your greatness in the context of what that person cares about. I think that's the best way to make sure not only you get a great rating, but you have a great relationship with your new boss and you're a person of, on their team that's in great standing. All right, second question. How do you handle the feedback of being told you might be too direct? I'm a young female in an operations position and most everything relies on me to get done and implemented. I'm really proud of the voice and courage I have shown over the last year, but with that feedback, I worry that I should tone it down. Oof, I'm like the A1A worst person to ask this because I'm too direct, I'm too blunt, kind of inappropriate, make jokes at the wrong time maniacal and relentless, annoying, all those things. So I think there's a way to be direct and also to be reasonable and fair. And just because you were given the feedback that maybe you've been too direct doesn't mean that you shouldn't be an advocate for yourself in your role or you should stop being so you should stop being so straightforward and forthright. I would handle the feedback if someone was like you're too direct, which I, I'm sure everyone would like to tell me all the time. What I, and I'm, I kind of sometimes think my style is terrible in general. And in those moments, what I tend to think about is what's the best way to be direct? I don't think it's being direct that's the problem. I think companies should be more direct. Um, I'm reading a really interesting book right now called Radical Candor, which is all about directness and how we need more directness at work. But you got to pick your spots of when and how you're direct. You know, Instead of shaming people in a big room or making a big bombastic statement, maybe you talk to somebody one on one. Instead of writing bitchy emails when you're fried and kind of exacerbated and everybody's pissed you off, maybe you pick up the phone and have a conversation with someone about what you're looking for and why and what you're concerned about and why. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't dial it back in terms of who you are, what you care about, the standard you have, the commitment you have to your work, and, and obviously your responsibility, which is for a lot of things. What I would do is if you're giving, being given the feedback that you are too direct, ask for more specifics. How are you too direct? What's an example of when you've been too direct? Are there examples when you have haven't been too direct or you've been just the right amount of direct. So get those, get those specifics. And then I think if you put that together with some common sense and just a quick like pause before you speak or pause before you hit send, I think you'll be just fine. I have a question off that. Do you think that women are told they're more direct more frequently because it comes off like this year? 
I don't know. Do you think so? Sometimes. I, I think, like, direct women are like, oh, they're, they're kind of bitchy. Like, if someone's like, no, I think this people way. don't like powerful women. No. no. I feel like when It's a like woman... in their psyche. Like, they don't realize it. Yeah. I cut you off. Sorry. Okay. No, I was 100%. just going to say, when a, wo- a woman is being, like, powerful and direct, it's like, oh, like, shit, she's a bitch or she's yeah. rude. But when a man is doing it, it's like, oh, he's charged. Like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I agree. I think there's definitely a double standard. I also think... Um, you know, women can be perceived as being like shrill or nagging or whatever. But I mostly think if you're just calm when you're direct, you're fine. Mm-hmm. Man or woman, like any any gender, it doesn't matter your gender. Like if you're calm and you're clear and you're like non-emotional but direct, I think that's probably the best way to be. I think when people get emotional, like men, I think can be super patronizing and it's so fucking annoying. And then women can just be like bitchy and then that's annoying too. So it's like, don't be like that. and Don't be like that. Just be calm and direct. Um, All right. My manager has selected me to take over her role once she retires. This is something we've been discussing over the last few months during career growth discussions, and the expectation was that this would be in about two to three years. She recently informed me that she's now planning to retire at the end of this year. I'm still relatively early in my career compared to many of my current colleagues. Given this and my shorter time frame, what are some tips you, can, you have on how to prepare for transitioning to management, especially around transitioning from being a colleague with someone to being their manager? So first of all, congratulations. You're the succession plan. That's got to feel great. Stop thinking about yourself as having a shorter amount of experience or less experience or being younger or feeling inferior to your peers. If your peers were so great, they would have been chosen as the successor. So there's clearly something to you that makes you the right candidate or the right person to be in charge. Um, The most awkward, worst transition ever is to manage your peers. It's like, I think it's one of the hardest things to do at work. Um, And the reason is, is that you're supposed to be the same as everybody and then you're their boss, which just changes the dynamic, changes the relationship. They're like, oh, you think you're better than me? And you're like, no, I actually just am the boss. So I think the biggest thing I would do is make sure you're clear with your new boss, your current manager's boss, what their expectations are, what they're looking for, what they value. Think for a little bit about what are your expectations? What do you value? What do you want your team to be like? How do you want people to describe you? Um, What kind of mojo do you want around you? And make sure you're really clear on that, write that down. I think the next thing to do is to listen and to acknowledge the awkwardness. I would like go to my peer and I'd be like, hey, we, you know, we used to be peers. Now I'm your manager. Obviously, this is awkward. I feel, you know, don't be afraid to be like, I think it's awkward. But let me ask you a question. What do you want from me? What do you want me to do for you? What do you care about? What do you not want to happen? What are you worried about? And you could share your fears, worries, concerns, things you want to. But just being open and honest and having that dialogue is really important. And then when you get the job at the end of the year, Make sure you set a vision, you communicate it, you set a super high standard and you hold people to it. And then you're gonna have to fire one of your peers and that's when it's gonna get really awkward, but you can call back at that point. 